Hello. Hello, everyone, um, and welcome to this uh, to this webinar. So um, I will be your host today. I'm I'm Mathieu Vesfal. I'm a PowerView expert engineer at Kitwa. I've been working at Kitwa for eight years. And with me is Francois. Hello, everyone. My name is Francois Mazin. I'm the, I'm the assistant director of scientific visualization at Kitwa Europe, and I will be the demo guy for this uh, webinar. Uh, great. So um, before we start, I just want to uh, suggest everyone to check out the chat. Uh, in the chat, you can ask questions. You can interact directly with us. So do not hesitate to, to, to just uh, talk, talk in the chat. You can even uh, introduce yourself if you want to. If you want to. Yes, just say hello. Would be happy. Yeah. So um, before we go, uh, we go into the actual uh, CFD with PowerView. Let's do a quick uh, presentation of Kitware. So um, as you may know, Kitware is um, an expert into uh, creating open source software. We have different areas of expertise from computer vision, data and analytics, uh, scientific computing, medical computing, and even software solutions. Uh, or, uh, we, <coughs> we are able to develop open source and universal platform for, uh, for desktop, uh, web, mobile, and of course, cloud and HPT, as we will see. Uh, you may already know some of our platforms. Uh, for, uh, uh, of course, you know about PowerView. Uh, PowerView is built on GTK. There is also Slicer and ITK for the medical part. Uh, of course, you may also know about CMake, uh, and we have many other open source platforms that you may, you may want to use. Um, in terms of service, uh, with Kitware, you can have, have access to training. So if you feel like after the webinar, you still uh, want to learn more about PowerView and what to do with PowerView, you may want to, uh, to try and, uh, and reach out to, uh, to do some PowerView training, for example. Uh, we also provide support. So if you have any questions, uh, reach out. You can buy a few, uh, a few hours, just 10 or 20 hours, or even a lot of hours if you want to. And finally, we also provide uh, development services for any kind of PowerView plugins, but any other uh, subject can be interesting. And finally, we can also work with, uh, if you are in a university, for example, we can work with you in a, in a grant, co grant collaboration. So uh, today we will talk about PowerView. So as a quick reminder, PowerView is an open source, cross-platform, data analysis and visualization application. Basically, what you do with PowerView is um, you explore and post-process your simulation results uh, in order to generate visualization to extract salient information. And of course, you can do that from your, uh, from your laptop to the actual uh, cloud and HPC platform. So today we talk about CFD. Yeah, thank you, Mathieu, for this introduction. So <clears throat> also a quick reminder. So CFD uh, stands for Computational Fluid Dynamics. So basically, this is an area, the scientific area, where we want to compute the movement of a fluid uh, in a volume. Uh, the volume could be uh, a closed volume, like a theater here, could be the flow of a fluid around some object here. It could be also some multi-phase uh, simulation like here with this uh, nice uh, waterfall. Uh, it could be also uh, like some advanced turbulence uh, simulation uh, as, as we can see here. Today we will uh, focus on the most simple case, uh, which is the wind tunnel use case where we have a flow of uh, a fluid, here it will be the air, around an object which is, uh, will be a plane. And we'll use a nice uh, data set from uh, provided, provided sorry, by uh, IT for Innovation. Uh, so thanks a lot for them for sharing this with, uh, with us. This is really uh, a great data set as uh, you will see. So today we will learn uh, from scratch how to go to some kind of visualization like that, uh, how to visualize scalar, vector fields, uh, and so on. Let's go. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's uh, switch to ParaView. So we are connected to a remote server just for uh, the webinar in order to have some uh, smooth experience. Uh, but uh, everything I will show will also uh, work uh, on your local machine, uh, no, no, no problem. So let's open uh, the data set. So this is a dot .case uh, data uh, file format, which is an inside gold file format, very classical in the CFD uh, industry, uh, from OpenForm, from Fluent, from Star CCM. So how was it uh, generated? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it was an open form uh, simulation. OK. Uh, but the, the file format is uh, inside yeah, gold. Sure. Yeah, so there is a bit of, 
of a mix up here. Uh, so Power View is able to open it. Uh, we have lots of uh, fields here, data and cell, uh, well, cell data actually, uh, mainly. Let's apply to see what does the data looks like. Uh, okay, does it look like a plane? Definitely not. Not really, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is classical CFD data. We have a huge domain, which is a volumic uh, mesh. Uh, as we can see here, and inside the mesh, there is uh, some uh, object. Uh, we can see it with the wireframe representation. There is a small, small object here, which is the plane, the Spitfire plane. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but it's hard to see here uh, with this kind of representation. So the first thing we can do is just cut the volume to see what's uh, inside. So <clears throat> the first filter we will use would be the clip filter. So it's available in the toolbar here, clip. So we clip with a plane. Let's use the default one. And here we can see that uh, we can know with surface with edges, look at how it is meshed inside the volume. So we can see, so let's just hide the plane. We can see some very coarse mesh on the outer part and very fine mesh uh, close to the object here, which is it is here, but as you can see, we don't see really the plane here. Why? Because uh, as this is very usual in CFD, the data is uh, a multi-block, which mean okay, which mean that with the multi-block inspector here, you can look at all the sub part of the of the data, and you can hide and show each of the of the data here. Uh, if you want, you can look at uh, the one called Spitfire and see we, yeah, maybe we will see something, yeah, some, some small part here, which is the plane, and we have the internal mesh and so on. So another first step you usually have to do with this kind of data is to extract the relevant uh, block for your analysis. So uh, let's extract, extract this block. Um, so we will use the extract block fitter. We want first to extract uh, the internal mesh. So in the property, we click only uh, the block we are interested to. We can rename it. Does it work? Yeah, perfect. Mm, sorry, but how did you rename that? Oh, good, good, uh, good question. I hit the F2 key on my keyboard, but we can also right click and use the rename. All right. Yeah. Sure. Two way. Maybe there is an another way. Do you no, know? I don't no? think so. Okay. There is two ways to do it. Yeah. Internal mesh uh, here. So we have only the mesh here, and we can create another uh, block just for the Spitfire plane. Uh, so we have to discard outlet, symmetry, and inlet, I think. So to make sure I understand well, so if the internal mesh is the volume, yeah. and then outlet and inlet and symmetry, I suppose, are the boundary conditions. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So we will just discard them and uh, keep only the relevant one. And I, so, and here we have only the Spitfire. So same as before, we can uh, rename it with Spitfire. Okay, so first we have prepared uh, our data. We have the internal mesh. Let's display the outline. So the big box around the plane, and we have only the plane. So it will be more easier for us to manipulate this data. Another thing is that the domain around the plane is quite huge. So if you want to display some streamline or some slice, uh, we will still have some small objects inside a large volume. So we want also to, we, we may want to reduce it. So let's use uh, still the clip filter, but this time we will use the box uh, volume to clip it. And we will use the uh, view direction with the camera placement in order to easily reduce manually the domain. So this way, with the, moving the camera like this, you're able to move exactly the, the plane uh, where you want it. With the box where you want it, exactly, is that correct? Yes, okay. yes. Yeah. Another way is also to enter the number yeah, but here. You have to know them. But yeah. For, for, for the first uh, insight, it's good to, to do, do it manu manually like okay. that. Uh, so I switch to the Y uh, plane, normal plane. So let's also reduce it. So as you see, it's very easy. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's keep it. Yeah. 
Looks 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 okay to me. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Let's click apply. Okay, discard the box. We don't care about the dynamic anymore. So there is some yeah, it's very rough. Yeah, rough. So we can use the exact property here to have some nice plane. Okay. Like this. So right now, if I still, so I can rename also this uh, this filter to volume of interest BOI. Okay. Just to know where we are in the in the pipeline. So so we have uh, our plane now. Let's let's okay yeah and and a small volume. So I think this is the first step to yeah, sure. to prepare the data. So okay now we want to display some field on it. Yeah, for let's example, uh, Scala, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, do, do we have Scala on this data? Yeah. We yes. Do, let's do let's check it in the information panel. We can look at it. Uh, we have some scalars here. Yes, we have, for instance, the temperature. Uh, the velocity is not a scalar. This is a vector. Yeah, vector we will talk about it later. So let's let's start with the temperature. I think pressure pressure is also a scalar. Yeah. yeah. Let, let's stick with temperature. Uh, so uh, if we show uh, our volume of interest with some surface, okay. So it's not relevant this yeah. kind of visualization. So let's use another filter which is the slice we create a slice uh, through uh, the volume in order to have uh, to know what are the value of the temperature inside mm -hmm. the volume okay so let's apply this slice filter uh, okay default should be okay so it's it's definitely better uh, okay let's let's hide the plane mm, that's not the temperature though no that's not the temperature uh, we will switch to mm. 2d visualization yeah, what, what is your question? Uh, maybe you switch to... Oh, yeah, we are to... Yeah. to sorry, yeah, better. is it better? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> um, switch to temperature. So, okay, we have some temperature, but it's still not relevant, right? We have only one uh, big color here. Let's look at the color map. The color map is the way we, we map a color to values of the field. So, uh, the idea would be to rescale. So, I think... We have some outlier values, some very high and very low value somewhere, so it completely makes the visualization uh, irrelevant. So here we may want to either rescale to the world, world range, this is what is not relevant at all, rescale to only what is visible, it's usually a bit better, but we still see nothing. Uh, and uh, a tip which is interesting is to use the data histogram in the color map editor. You can uh, increase the number of uh, of uh, see. We can see that most of the value are close to uh, this value near three hundred. So we can either move it manually, move the bounds manually here. So it's great to have a first insight here, and we can see some uh, some uh, some peak here, some kind of Gaussian distribution here, and here we can start to see high value and new value more easily. And of course, we can use a manual uh, range uh, with a custom uh, range. Uh, so yeah, I already look a bit of the, of the value. So let's look what's happening around uh, 300. And here we have the temperature add element. So we can clearly see where we have high temperature and low temperature on this data set. So this is the first way to, to look at it. Uh, maybe if we want to know a bit more about the frontier between between value below 300 and uh, up to 300. This is yeah the middle value is about 300. So a filter for this is a contour in order to know exactly the frontier where where it happens. So you want to draw a contour on the slice to draw lines uh, uh, on the frontier. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. Yes. Correct. Um, so. The filter to do this is a contour filter, but as you can see, it's gray. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it means that it could not ap be applied to what we are visualizing right now. Uh, does part of you tell you that uh, why it's gray? Mm, not it, really. I yeah. If you put your mouse on this, you can see on the on the bottom uh, right part. Of oh the right, value, right, right. It right. says uh, require a point attribute with uh, one component. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I cannot point. Yeah. I can yeah. see it <laughs> always my finger, but it's not, not really. relevant. <laughs> Okay, uh, thanks, Mathieu. Uh, so, so the, the, the key point here is that the, we have data at elements, at cells. 
uh, and for contour you need data at points. So uh, there is a dedicated filter for this, which is cell data to point data, which uh, we interpolate data from cells to point. Very simple to understand. So let's use it. And on this data, uh, okay, yeah, we can stick with uh, the temperature here. Uh, and as, as before, we scale to 299.9, to okay. So it's a bit smooth, smooth, more, more smoother, but the data are, are nearly the same. And here, as you can see, the contour is available. Uh, and let's create a contour at 300. And I did it on the wrong data, sorry, on T temperature. Yeah, so as we can see, and let's display the other. And here we have some nice uh, representation where we can clearly see where the temperature are above 300, below 300, and see that near the, the pilot, uh, maybe there is some uh, gradients that could happen and so on. So this is a great thing to use slice and uh, contour and, uh, and uh, play a bit with the color map in order to emphasize what you want to see here. Maybe, yeah? Yeah, 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 always. Let's go on. Yeah, yeah. what about vectors? Uh, maybe. Oh, oh, maybe new variables. Yeah, yeah. Ju mm -hmm. ju just before, uh, I, I just want to explain, uh, sometimes your data set, uh, well, usually you have some basic output of your solver, like temperature, velocity, and sometimes you want to compute some derivative right. variables. It's very easy to do it with uh, Paraview. You have the calculator uh, filter. So with the calculator, uh, you, you will apply some formula to each value of the field you have selected, uh, and then it will create a new field. So for this webinar, we will uh, use the dynamic dynamic head formula, for instance. So the HF. Uh, let's let's take some 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 density. We want uh, the norm of the vector. So this is the magnitude. We want uh, put it to square and divided everything by two. Okay, this is a formula. If we apply it, we can see we have a new field computed and that we can uh, display here. We can see it's a very, very high here, very low uh, below. Um, so uh, that's a nice formula, but can, uh, I have a way to, can, uh, can I store it somewhere? Oh, yes, you can, of course. Uh, in five dot, Paraview 5.11, we introduce the expression manager. Yeah. This is a way to store and reload your expression. So this is a, here we have a quite simple expression, yeah. but sometimes it's very long mm. if you start to do some complex things. So we want, you, may, you may want to save it. So it's very easy with, this, with these buttons. It already exists. So we can look also at the expression manager here. Uh, so the expression has been saved. You can rename it to, I don't know. DHF, uh, I guess. DH, uh, yeah, DHF. Good suggestion. Save it, uh, and here we have uh, our uh, our expression that has been sa saved. And for instance, if I create another calculator, I can directly click on what I've said, and everything is copy pasted automatically. Okay. Uh, and I think you can share it between instances also. Uh, so yeah, I, you I can export it. I think. Export it, yeah. yeah. So I really encourage you to to play a bit with it. Okay, so I think we are done with color visualization, basic yep. of this. Uh, let's move to vector field. I know you, you like it very, <laughs> very well. <laughs> so let's move. Um, so um, what, what vector data we have here? We have u, which is the velocity, with uh, x, y, z. So default visualization is not really great. You can display uh, the magnitude or only x, only y, only z. It's not always very relevant uh, for vector field. Mm -hmm. So first way, for instance, uh, let's let's let, let's play a bit with the pressure. I think uh, so. Pressure is a scalar, uh, and as we did before, we may want to compute some derivative. For instance, we may want to compute the gradient of the pressure to know um, what are the different very different points. So uh, you can use a gradient filter for this purpose. Uh, let's use with pressure, very easy. Uh, we, can, we, we, we may discuss it later. We can also compute diversion, vorticity, and also Q criterion, which is very used uh, in CFD analysis. 
Let's stick with the gradient right now. So here we compute the gradient. This is a new field uh, that has been added to existing field here. Uh, so gradient is a vector, uh, and in order to display it, we may want uh, to display nice arrows to see how it goes. Uh, so for this, uh, we can use a glyph filter. Um, we will orient uh, our arrows uh, with a gradient. Uh, do not scale it for no. Uh, we'll put a, a nice scale factor for this webinar. Just apply. Okay, and maybe we can see we have some we have some arrows here, but we do not do not really see them very well. So let's color them by the pressure. Better, but not the best. Uh, we need to apply a better custom range. Uh, we can look at the no, not, not this one. You misplaced. Oh, sorry, not today. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yes, as we can see, we still have still uh, some some peak somewhere with the values. Uh, so I already have the the relevant values here to speed up a bit. But you can explore it interactively. Um, you know, when when you uh, we scale here, you yeah. can disable automatic rescaling. So uh, every time you create a new filter, it will avoid you know uh, rescaling it for you. So uh, it stays like to configure it. Okay, let's let's try it for yeah. this this time. Sure. Okay, great. Okay, so it's better. Uh, let's uh, let's maybe hide it. No, the gradient. Let's just display solid color. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so here we can see nice glyph. Uh, well, I think I can I can display better. Maybe temperature or something like that. Yeah. Um, and we can see where uh, where the pressure is high, which is under the plane. So the pressure is low up uh, over the plane. And we can see nice uh, gradient uh, very easily uh, where, where are the direction of the gradient. So according to this, I will suggest that uh, the plane will uh, lift and take off, right? Which is good for yeah. the plane. Yeah, <laughs> to fly. Okay, so glyph filter is uh, one of classic uh, way to display vector fields. Another way is uh, the stream stream tracer to display streamlines. So let's move to 3D again. Uh, so we don't need our slice. Um, not this this one. So you you will uh, draw the streamline on the volume of interest. You go back to the volume, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So uh, I will be very basic here about streamline. Uh, Mathieu did a very great webinar, uh, which is also available on our on our uh, web page about uh, all advanced, oh. all streamline, all advanced things. Yes. We have a question about uh, your uh, early oh, computation. Prefer. Yes. Uh, besides the calculator filter, is there an easy way to calculate a vector deri derivative like the Jacobian? Good question. I don't know exactly. Uh, uh, besides this one, I don't know. But you still, uh, still is there a yeah. Jacobian filter? I don't. Oh know. yeah, yeah. You're right. No. No. no, no. Don't don't find it. But I, I think you you need to compute it using, uh, for example, the calculator. Yeah. If that's possible. Yes, maybe. Okay, we can check it. Check it and. Uh, Send it uh, later to you. Uh, okay, let's let's go with the stream tracer. Um, okay, so we will work on the volume, this one, and use the stream tracer one. Uh, let's place. So uh, we have a line which is displayed, and we want to display uh, the particle, the, the path of the particle of each point of this line. So we have to place this line in front of the of the plane here. Uh, as again, we can use the camera placement here to make it more easy to, as a first insight, is usually good uh, to have it. Yeah. So you're trying yeah. to put it just in front of the plane at yeah. the right location. Yeah, right? if we move to 3D, okay. Oh, well, not bad for a manual placement. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, we will use forward and uh, maybe reduce a bit the resolution because it will be too 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 dense if we stay with it. And we will use uh, 
is one, which is okay. Okay, so we have streamline right here. Uh, maybe make it a bit a bit lower. Yeah, okay. This streamlines around this. This is this way. Uh, but this is a white, white line, so it's not really great. We can color it by what we want, the U, for instance, uh, which is the velocity. We can rescale it, uh, as, as we did before. Uh, but this is, this is still a line, so we can use another filter, which is a tube filter, to make it more uh, thick. Uh, with some radius of uh, 0.2, should be better. Yeah, and here we have some uh, nice solid streamlines. We can clearly see where they are, where the flow goes, if it goes above or below uh, the plane, and so on. Uh, okay, I think uh, we have covered quite uh, the basic of stream tracer. We have also other way with the surface leak. Uh, you can animate glyph and so on, so I will encourage you to, to look at uh, to watch the other webinar we, we did uh, with this. Uh, maybe a few words before uh, ending this uh, webinar about basics. Um, you may want sometimes to plot data uh, in a chart, uh, like for instance you can use the plot data overline here, uh, if you place your data on the wing. Like this. Uh, you can have some nice plot of what is happening along this line. Uh, so I did it on the wrong. Yeah, you need to do it yeah. on the VOI. Uh, yeah, and VOI, sorry. It will maybe take time to redo it, but it's okay. Okay, let's place it again. Up on the wings. And here we have, yes. And the in the in the property, you can select what you want to display. So let's display, I don't know, the pressure, for instance. And we do, you can use the point X, for instance. Let's hide it. So I, I can see that we have a we have a hole in, inside of the chart because, like the, the line is going through the plane and through the plane there is no data. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. There is no volume inside the plane in okay. the simulation. So yeah, sure. this one. And uh, with this kind of uh, filter, you can easily check where are the high pressure, where are the low pressure, and so on. Uh, maybe the last thing I want to display, uh, if you want to compare data from one asset to one another, or you want to compare two different, uh, two different uh, values, uh, you can split the view very easily here, uh, and, and select another uh, render view here. And with the right click, you can link the two views together, and you can and the two views will move uh, in the same way. And for instance, we can display on the Spitfire on one the velocity, on 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 the other one we can display the temperature and see where are the high temperature, uh, does it correlate, and so on. For instance. I think I'm done with this uh, basic uh, webinar. Do we have some uh, other questions? Uh, no questions yet, but uh, let's uh, give a, a few seconds to uh, our viewers to, to ask any, any other questions. Right. So um, uh, 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 while we wait, um, uh, maybe let's summarize uh, in, a, in a few words what, what we talked about today. Yes. Um, so today we see what classic CFD data looks like. So big mesh uh, with small object. Uh, how to explore it to know what's happening with the multiple inspector with a clip filter and how to, how to reduce to a volume of interest for your processing. We see how to display scanners on the slice. We see how to compute new variable. Uh, in this example, we compute the dynamic head formula, which it could be anything uh, like the, um, uh, the Jacobian that the team uh, suggested. Uh, and or we also explore so basic vector field visualization with glyphs and streamlines. So with all these basic tools, we can definitely get this kind of image. Here we just added some uh, PVR rendering with an environment lighting, uh, but 
uh, all of this is just classic uh, post-processing uh, as, 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 uh, as we just demonstrated. So we, we do have two questions. Yes. Uh, how did you use the Q criterion again? Uh, maybe you can show uh, very quickly how to generate the Q criterion. Yes, of course. So let's let's keep only one. So on the volume of interest, yeah. Uh, on the gradient, let this play again over slice. Here. Uh, so here I am on, on the gradient filter. So you have to click the advanced uh, properties here. In order to show uh, advanced computation, you have the divergence here, you have the vorticity, and you have the Q criterion. So if I click Q criterion and I compute on the nice slice. Uh, okay. It hasn't been. Uh, you need to compute on the vector, I think. On the vector? No. Okay. Okay, but this, this, this is a way to, to compute it here by using this filter. Uh, you can check, uh, yes, on the, on the pressure should be here. Okay, let's try on the wall volume. It, it may take time, but... But this is the ID. Yes, yeah. Okay. Do we have something uh, which has... Okay. Uh, um, yeah, you need... You need to compute the divergence uh, also to get a good criterion. Okay, let's let's keep it. Yeah, and what's yeah? And what's it you think? Oh. What? No, it didn't work. Uh. Okay, this is live demo. <laughs> we should definitely check what why why it doesn't uh, it doesn't work. Yeah, you, you, uh, your input array must be three components uh, to compute this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let's do it in the in the. Velocity. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, Thanks, Mathieu. And you should have the Q I know you have the Q criterion yeah. computed. I hope it answers your question. Okay. Uh, uh, well, yeah, we have uh, another question. So I will start with a bad question. Uh, will the vid video be uploaded on YouTube? Absolutely, yes. Uh, on Vimeo and on YouTube, you will be able to find the uh, whole video. Another question from Deep. Uh, can we do bond pass filtering? Um, uh, I don't exactly know what it, well, what does the body means here. Do, do, do you know what it? Uh, bond pass do? filtering means to have some frequency, right? Yes, I think it's related to frequency, but so uh, I don't may see. maybe with the new DSP plugin. Yeah, maybe that's related. You can do bond pass filtering. Uh, there is uh, in, in it's not in Parview five eleven, but in it will be available in in, in Parview five dot twelve. There is a new plugin called uh, Digital Signal Processing (DSP) uh, that will let you uh, uh, that will let you compute uh, FFT and um, uh, actual bond pass filtering. Uh, I'm not sure how it relates to CFD, though, but uh, who knows? But if you are just looking for to threshold values, yeah, maybe just to it. have it in some small range, you have the threshold filter here. Uh, where you can specify the low bound and the high bound, and it will keep only the relevant uh, elements uh, on this. Yeah, maybe, maybe, that's, maybe that's a question. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Let us know uh, deeply. Uh, another question. Uh, sorry, I missed the start. What kind of simulation is this? Uh, runs, runs, or L E L E S? Uh, do Do you know these terms? No, I, d I don't have the details. I may I may ask to to the people that provided these uh, these data sets, which are at the IT for innovation. Uh, okay, so it was generated with OpenFoam. Yeah, that's uh, that's all we know. Yeah. Uh, but we did not uh, run this simulation. Actually, no. it was provided to us. Uh, we are more in the visualization side of things, if you know what I mean. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, Dipali said it's for uh, our oh, acoustics, so so that's great. And uh, thanks, uh, Lucas, for sharing the blog. Uh, okay, I think we've answered all the questions. Um, let's let's end this. Yes. Okay. So um, Thank thanks everyone for coming. Uh, that that was great uh, for for us and to interact with us in the chat. Uh, so as we said, this video will be available on YouTube and on Vimeo. So if you missed any part of it, you will be able to look back on it. Um, as a reminder, if you are interested for uh, professional services around Paraview, VTK, or any of uh, Kitwa software, uh, do not hesitate to reach out. We can provide trainings, uh, support, and uh, specific developments. Um, and uh, if you are interested by the next webinars, uh, we do not know the subject yet, uh, but uh, it will come this year that we will be at, at least one or two 
uh, webinar this year. So do, do not um, hesitate to follow uh, Kids Where You Up LinkedIn, uh, where you will have all the information. I think that's it. Um, thank you, everyone, and bye-bye. Thank you for attending.